In the head-to-head -head series, I show you images from two different patients with two different diseases that can look similar radiologically. Both of these patients present with acute tonsillitis. Here's patient one, and you can see a lot of fullness on the right side of the neck. Patient one also has an MRI. And you can pause here to have a look at these images and see if you can come up with a specific diagnosis. Here's patient two. We don't have as many images on patient two, just this one CT image. But you can see a lot of swelling in a very similar location. This would be a good time to pause the video and see if you can figure out what the diagnosis is in each of these two patients. So both of these patients have a lot of inflammation on the right side of the suprahyoid neck. They do indeed both have an acute tonsillitis. In patient number two, we see the pretty classic signs of a peritonsor abscess. Now this is not a simple peritonsor abscess. This one has extended through the superior pharyngeal constrictor muscle and into the parapharyngeal space. All of the parapharyngeal fat has succumbed to this abscess all the way out to the styloid process. So this is a complex peritonsor abscess with involvement of the parapharyngeal space and destruction of all the parapharyngeal fat. In patient one, we're going to use the parapharyngeal fat to help us decide where this cystic lesion came from. We talk about displacement of the parapharyngeal fat, helping us to decide the origin of lesions in this location. But here, the parapharyngeal fat has not been displaced. There is parapharyngeal fat all the way around the outside of the lesion. That was true on the MRI as well as on this CT. So what arises within the parapharyngeal fat? Not a lot does that. You can get pleomorphic adenomas that arise within the parapharyngeal fat. You can get venal lymphatic malformations because those can appear anywhere in the body and you can get second branchial cleft cysts. This is the second most common location of a second branchial cleft cyst here within the parapharyngeal fat. So this is likely superinfected because of its proximity to the acute tonsillitis, but this is an underlying lesion. If this patient is sent to surgery for what is presumed to be a peritonsor abscess, it will make it very diff difficult once the patient has defervesced to do a definitive surgery. This patient is better treated not with needle aspiration, but with antibiotics first and then a definitive surgery to remove the underlying cyst. So that's the difference between an infected second branchial cleft cyst and a complex peritonsor abscess. And the key finding to making this diagnosis is this rim of fat all the way around the infected cyst. If this were a peritonsor abscess or extension of a peritonsor abscess, this fat would not be here between the tonsil and the cyst.